We've been together for a decade now. Still every day I'm loving you more. If I could do it all again, I'd probably do it all the same as before. I am, of course, singing to Deb and Adarimi, Wibbyblogs.com. Just kidding. This is the song 10 Years from Iceland's Eurovision 2021 act, Dathy and Gagna Magnid. This is a love story all about the lead singer Dathy's love for his wife, Arnie. It comes with an adorable music video, which features, I don't want to say Godzilla because it looks like an ostrich. Sort of an adorable take on Godzilla, or rather some kind of giant monster. Um, it's just very sweet, and for me it really elevates. The question is, will they elevate on the stage? Shall we talk about it? <laughs> Let's, Let's do this! this. How does it keep getting better? Iceland is performing in semi-final two. They are in spot number eight after Moldova, but before Serbia. So this is a dance sandwich and the filling, Iceland, is perhaps a bit more subdued than what's on either side of it. In any case, I've got to tell you about my personal journey with this song. When I first heard the studio cut, Devin, people do go on journeys. People do have changing, evolving relationships with music, with life, with many things, okay? If you're just always so kind of, what's the word, set on the past, you'll never grow. In any case, this song, when I first heard it, I would have taken it or left it. It was fine. It, it didn't live up to the hype of last year's entry to me as an audio cut. But then when I saw the music video, I don't know, it just became next level. I saw the sweetness, the tenderness, even though the lyrics of the song have nothing to do with the music video, it was just so adorable and it gives me hope for the stage. Now, I prefer this to last year's entry. I know that's controversial. I prefer 10 years to the entry from last year, Think About Things. I think this has, it's more mellow, it's more love boat. I'm riding the waves. The dance moves. They are definitely original. They are definitely original, but I think they will stand out on the Eurovision stage because ain't nobody doing no fish dance like Dathy does. Long story short, I have positive feelings towards the group and towards the song, and I'm hoping for good staging. I'm not comparing this to last year. I'm not bothered by those comparisons. No, because I prefer this. All right, Jonathan. So I sat here in the Iceland review video of last year and talked about how it was not one of my favourites, unfortunately. They were in my bottom five of 2020. Um, and I enjoy this a lot more. I really grew to this a, a fair amount. I think, you know, it's still not necessarily one of my favourites of the year. And, you know... Um, a music genre that I'm completely, you know, head over heels about. But I don't know, this this feels... Um, it just feels richer, it feels nicer. I got bored halfway through Think About Things, and I would usually just turn it off about a minute and a halfway through. But I want to listen to the whole three minutes of 10 years. I do really quite like this, and the way that... There's a bit more light and shade in it, starting with the strings, and then we go into the synths, and then there's a choir involved. And while they have all these elements, they do blend quite well together, I would say. So, yeah, I think for a three-minute pop song, this is a sort of, you know, in the sort of solid good are the words that I would sort of use to describe it. So, yeah, I am pleasantly happy about this song. How does it keep getting better? Every day our love finds a new way to grow. The time we spend together simply feels good, Oliver. How does it keep getting better? It gets better and better every time we hear something new from Daddy or Gagna Magnet. I think this is stellar. I really think this is excellent. I, I don't have much to fault. Like Jonathan said, it's so much more richer than last year. I absolutely adored Think About Things, but I think even now the aesthetic has grown and it's so much stronger now. There's there's a group cohesion that Gag Magnet have always had, but it just 
grow stronger every year and you kind of feel this family attachment because they are a family and friends band you, you know you feel at one with that with that attachment um musically really really strong i think the strings at the start are a really nice and refreshing opening and as well that thousand person choir while it could be viewed as somewhat tropey and perhaps cliche they kind of poke fun at it and that works for them i think they did the same with think about things when Danny had that moment where he kind of turned to the side and the screen went all starry as if the stars started to align and the wind machine in his hair. Um, you know, the similar moments here that show the love and respect that they have for pop music, but they can still have fun with it. And let's just say, Daddy basically did this all on his own. Uh, obviously, Gagnon and the band have a lot of creative input in terms of like the the staging and everything there but all of the instruments bar the strings and the choir daddy has done himself and you have to give musical merit to a man of so many talents i just think this is wonderful and one of my favorites of the year Devin, thank you william lee adams you know and i echo what the other mr adams has just said yes i think this is excellent i call it superhero disco this is the sort of sci-fi realism with disco sprinkles it is just a burst of creativity you know the characters that he you know like the gagna magna yes the, the, the his cohesion amongst them but each member of the band plays a very distinct role I like the music, I like the vision, I like the arrangement, I like the simple moves, the choreography, even down to the wardrobe. And yes, of course, this does dip for me compared to think about things. But I think a lot of that comes from seeing borrowed elements in this, whereas the first time it had a much fresher impact. I'm not suggesting it's stale by any means, I'm just suggesting it's familiar. And when I look about my, when I think of my heroes and the people that I've loved over the years, you know, I kind of liked probably their first or second album more than I do like their work today. It doesn't mean that I don't enjoy and respect the work that they put out, right? There's simplicity here. There's humor. There is, um, there's family values. Family values in a way that does not feel oppressive. You know, quite often when we hear of family values, it excludes the other. This is like bringing everybody in to join in this moment of matrimonial celebration and just like, you know, if he's not thinking about his child, he's thinking about his wife. Uh, do you know what? For those of us who are still single, kneeling at the altar, praying for, you know, objects of affection to walk into our lives, that is the kind of person you want to pick. Isn't it? You know, you don't want somebody who's going to be flipping a ponytail and then collapsing with high fever on the floor. You want somebody who is a contemporary songwriter, <clears throat> but has a vintage twist. You know, I think this is excellent because had Eurovision 2020 gone ahead, this guy has put Iceland on the map. Yeah, who's the big yada yada yada. But, you know, <laughs> The real star of Iceland is Dathy and the Gagna Magnet. I just feel like that is the moment. That became a global phenomenon. You know, it became a TikTok meme, you know, trending on Twitter, all types of social media. And the guy was so modest. He didn't even know whether he was coming back, you know. No, this is absolutely fantastic. I'm really in love with it. And just when I thought that my heart was full, I found places that I never explored. You're so fascinating. I can't remember the last time I was bored. It's simple rhyming, but it's effective and it's quite sweet and quite cute. I wish they had presented the song in a different way. He told me in an interview that they ran out of time, basically. They wanted to finish the video, but they just couldn't and they had to have this TV show. Um, and I think the first performance kind of impacted a lot of people's thinking, but then after people saw the music video and saw the clever kind of play on visuals, you know, the full 
the song coming into its full fruition, then they really understood why this works and will work at Eurovision. The question we have to ask is, will this qualify? Last year, it was a clear yes from everybody. I'm very curious if that will be the same this year. Just to remind you, in the running order, they are in the first half. They're singing eighth. We have Poland Rafal in sixth with the ride. Then in seventh is Moldova's Natalia Gordienko with sugar. Then we go to Iceland. And afterwards, we have Serbia and then Georgia, Tornika <clears throat> Kipiani. Let's start with Jonathan. All the names you've mentioned now, I don't see them shaking the scoreboard, quite frankly. You know, I think this is just another reminder that Iceland is sailing through. Um, you know, I do see Moldova shaking the scoreboard. I do think Serbia is going to get love. This is not an easy semi-final. This is a semi-final of death. Can we just... Oh, no, this is semi-final oh, two. This is semi-final two. Wait a minute. It's not the semi-final of death. Okay, Jonathan, do you think this will qualify? I do think it will qualify. Um, I think it is, while, you know, it's still a bit upbeat, I think it's fairly different from the other upbeat songs that are in the mix around it and just sort of in the contest generally. Um, I also do think that, well, you know, normally we would say um people won't remember their 2020 entries for people that are returning i think a number of people will remember daffy enough um to go like oh yeah i remember him and then just sort of casually because he just sort of stands out in their minds a bit more they will you know put a few votes towards him so i think yes i would put it as a qualifier yeah if Anybody says this isn't qualifying, they are delusional. This is 100% going to the final. And I actually expect to see this in the top five, possibly on the podium. Look at the material that is there. I think when you consider the jury criteria, they're looking for memorability, vocal capacity, performance, and originality. It's got all of those things. The vocal capacity, you might not think of it immediately, but Daddy's got this, Daddy? Daffy has got this incredible bass voice. He's got this incredible bass voice that we don't often hear at Eurovision. And that's because pop music has this trend of male voices going really high into the falsetto and female voices going really low register just to show off what the limits of the human voice can do. But, you know, Davi just stays within that register and it's really impressive. Also, Televote is going to love it based on what Jonathan said, um, the memorability from last year, the viral um, the viral potential that it has to go all over TikTok, all over social media. The moment this is going on stage, you know that casual viewers at home are going to jump up, try to do that dance, and it's going to blow up all over Instagram the next day. So I, I just, if there is a timeline in this multiverse that this doesn't qualify, I don't want to visit it. Like, th this just, it has to go through. You know, I mean, Jonathan mentioned something earlier on and said that, oh, that people will remember him from last year. Well, first of all, I mean, I think you give too much credit that people actually, you know, if the show didn't happen last year and they only had 30 seconds on stage. But let us, even, let us even assume they do remember him from last year. Familiarity sometimes does breed contempt. So I'm not even going to go with that. What I will say, though, is synth is in. And this guy packs a lot of synth in his track, you know? And you've got these purity of fire voices assembling. And all those little gimmicks, which appear so simple, but they're just so well thought out. 10 years is the musical vaccine that is lifting us out of corona. Let's keep it real. Who doesn't want this in the final? Well, three of us do so far. The question um, is not want. The question was will. I'm so not you... a doubter, William Lee Adams. I'm not a doubter. I'm just asking. So you do think it's going through, yes? Oh, babe, babe. It's in. Thank you for confirming. And I hope your score reflects 
that it is a finalist. In any case, if this were in semi-final one, I wouldn't be sure if it was qualifying, to be honest. But in semi-final two, this is qualifying. I was just counting while y'all were talking, and I, I just really don't see a scenario where it doesn't. It stands out sonically. It stands out visually. It stands out in terms of virality, which some people might call gimmickry, but I think it's just more of creating viral moments, things people can remember, things people can TikTok to. Um, and also, there's a realness to them. They're not trying to be pop stars, they're just being themselves. And that's the strength here. This is not someone, you know, spending hours with the makeup, the costume, you know, trying to be perfect, trying to... No. It's stripping back all artifice, and it's just like, hey, some of us aren't even singers. You know, they said in their documentary, some of them are not singers. They just need to fill the six-person role, so they created a group, and they grabbed their friends. So it, it, it's very real. It's so different. It's going through. I'm confident but can about I, that. Can I also add, William, in addition to all the wonderful things that you said, surprise, I will say there is no puppet mistress controlling this from the abyss. You know, this is self-composed, it's self-realized, and it's self-engineered and self-executed. I think points should be rewarded for artists who come with their own stuff, you know? And, I yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, some people come with their own stuff and it's not good, though, so let's keep it real. A juror's not gonna be like, oh, you you made that dress yourself. Here's 20 points. No. Um, okay, look, it's time to give... I stopped before going where I was gonna go. All right, it is time to reveal our scores out of a 10, along with a justification. Let's start in the United... Ki uh, we're all in the United Kingdom. Let's start with Jonathan. <laughs> So I gave this a solid 7 out of 10. I, yeah, I am quite happy to listen to it. It doesn't necessarily light my fire to sort of reach the realms of, I don't know, like the top 25% of the scoreboard or whatever. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy with this overall. Um, but yeah, good luck to him. Oliver. I'm giving this a 9.5 out of 10. One of my highest of the year. And I've just got to say, I think a lot of people are underestimating this because of the winning potential of last year. Now, I'm going to give you an analogy. If you're in school, you're an A student, you're an A plus student, and you're continually hitting that top mark, people don't pay much attention. But if you go from a D, an E, an F, to an A within a week, people are going to stand out. That's why this isn't getting as much attention because Davi is consistently at the top of his game. I think this is amazing. I think the people who are included in the thousand person choir, I know a couple of those people myself, they are going to pick up the phone and vote for it because they are in the song. It's just fantastic, such an amazing campaign and I can't wax lyrically enough about it. Moving on. And I will also add that the playful spirit that this song packs is actually building bridges. Case in point, Jenrik Sigvard from Germany is also a part of this, and he's got a vested interest in this doing well. My that score, one extra vote is not going to make the difference to qualification. That is not the point here. I could say one <laughs> extra nation, excuse me, you know? I've given this a seven. Think about things I certainly prefer, but that is not to say that I don't like this. And a seven reflects the breadth of scores that I've had to assign over all the entries. But this really is, is one that I'm deeply fond of. I absolutely love it. We often talk about narratives matching score. Um, I'm just curious, to get an eight, nine, or 10, how much more fond of it would you need to be? Well, interestingly, I don't have a 10 in Eurovision 2021, nor did I have one in Eurovision 2020, nor did I have one in Eurovision 2019. Well, let's focus so on eights and nines. Have to, you also have to read contextually to get a much fuller flavor of how individuals assign scores. Not everybody replicates your patterns. And, and not everyone, you know, waxes lyrically on a song and gives it a seven. All right, so my score was assigned before the music video oh. dropped. Listen, 
<laughs> One of us needs to leave. <laughs> Listen, I, I, I really enjoyed this. I think there's great potential for the stage. I think they are perhaps, yeah, no, they're among the most authentic, real, down to earth people in this competition. No, 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 my score is not the lowest by any means. My it's score is the so lowest in this house, I am sure. In this group of four? Well, it's not hard to have the lowest score in this house among the four. My score is a six, which is quite good. Which is quite good. Thank you very oh, much. I love that. Thank you. Say that again? I said it's good. No, it is good. Because you got to remember, that's before the music video. And as I've said repeatedly, the music video is so good. And he's told us, actually, in our interview that um, he's going in a whole new direction. So the surprises will keep coming. In any case, we are not the only movie bloggers. There are dozens of us all over the world. And they, too, have assigned scores out of a 10. Ooh, and people are getting nervous. People are calling the police because they want to hear the score. When we take the overall global average across all these people, we get... Wow, 7.39. That is excellent. And I think that's fair. I think that's actually a very fair score. That's the one who's three points down. Anyway. Um, 1.39. You know how he was talking about A to F? I think your math skills would be toward the bottom there, Hunty, because it's 1.39. You're two points down from Jonathan and I. You know what? You gave a seven. I gave a six. It's hardly... Two <laughs> points down. You could have I think he's doing it in multiples of 0.5. Exactly. I don't know what kind of math you are doing. <laughs> the math Honestly, with. girl, girl, listen. Wee wee math. People got to go to work. That's what we think. What do you think? Are you living for death these 10 years? Do these 10 years speed by in three minutes? Let us know here in, on BB Blogs. Make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you know when all our next videos come out. And you can follow us on social medias Devin Adoremi, WeWeBlogs.com, why don't you tell us what those social medias are? What I will say, actually, is slightly different. You know, is your daddy a social media queen? Because <laughs> daddy is on Twitter, he is on Facebook, he's on Instagram, and he is serving, honey. So make sure you all click and follow him on all those social media platforms. And if you're looking for us, we are on Pinterest. We do not use <laughs> Pinterest. We don't use Pinterest or OnlyFans or Snapchat. So stop bringing them up. All right. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.